And finally we come to the spinal cord. It's the most caudal part of the central nervous system. That's why it develops from the caudal part of the neural tooth. If you don't understand what I'm talking about right now, then you should watch my recent videos about the neural tube and embryology of the central nervous system. The first what you see here is the cerebral pedunculi with the intrapeduncular fossa. This is the cerebral pedunculi and this over here is the fossa. Maybe you don't understand how it looks like but it will make more sense after I draw other stuff too. And as we go downwards the next structure is the pons. It means bridge in Latin. There are numerous functions of this structure but I will explain it in the next videos because this is not the part of the spinal cord. Right below that there are pyramids of the medulla oblongata and the ovary body. So these are the pyramids and this is the ovary body. The ovary body are the nuclei and the pyramids are the elevations caused by the corticospinal tract. The corticospinal tract means it comes from the cortex of the brain and then it goes to the spinal cord. That's why the corticospinal tract. The pyramid is found between two sulcuses. The anterior median sulcus and the anterolateral sulcus that is between the olivary body and the pyramid. Somewhere over here it is the decussation of pyramids. It is the place where almost 80% of motor fibers in the pyramids cross. So we have the fibers coming from the brain going to the pyramids and at the decussation of pyramids they cross. When they cross the middle line, they continue down as the lateral cerebrospinal fasciculus. This is a very important place because this is the place where spinal cord begins and the medulla oblongata ends. Up there we had the medulla oblongata and down is the spinal cord. Let's write this all down. This was a pons. This was the cerebral pedunculi. This was the interpeduncular fossa. Then we had the olivary body. We had the pyramids. We had this sulcus over here. It was the anterolateral sulcus. And this sulcus over here was the anterior median sulcus. Now I will talk about the spinal cord. The spinal cord is divided in more parts. First I will draw the cervical part. This is the neck part of the spinal cord. As I mentioned before, there are spinal nerves. The spinal nerves come from the roots of the spinal nerves. There are anterior and posterior roots of the spinal nerves. The posterior come from the posterolateral sulcus which we cannot see from this perspective. And the anterior root of the spinal nerve comes from the anterolateral sulcus of the spinal cord. They join and they create the spinal nerve. So we have the posterior roots and we have the anterior roots. The anterior roots come from the anterolateral sulcus and the posterior roots come from the posterolateral sulcus which we cannot see because it's behind. Now the place where the spinal nerve exits the vertebral column is used to give the spinal cord segment names. For example we have the vertebrae here those are the bones. I will just illustrate it very simple. Those are the vertebrae, one after another. And they enclose the spinal cord from all sides. So if this spinal nerve leaves the vertebra column above the second vertebrae, then we will name this segment of the spinal cord here C2. C stands for cervical, and 2 describes that the spinal nerve coming from this spinal cord segment leaves the vertebra column 
above the second vertebra. Now this goes like this all the way to the thorax. We have the last C7 vertebra and then we had the TH vertebra, TH1. So the spinal nerve comes somewhere from here for example and then it exits between these two. Now this segment of the spinal cord will be named C8. And then comes another vertebra, TH2. And the spinal nerve leaves between TH1 and TH2. This segment of spinal cord will be called TH1. So first we had the situation when we have the spinal nerve leaving above the second vertebra the segment is called C2. So here the spinal nerve leaves above but here it leaves below. So we have the spinal nerve leaving under the TH1 and it's called the segment is called TH1. So here it's under but up there it was above. Now I explained to you where it happens and where it changes. It changes around the C8 segment and I illustrated that here. Now we should go further and I draw on a thoracic spine. It is relatively thin part and longer than the other parts. The part has around 12 segments and after that comes one thicker lumbar part. The lumbar part consists of 5 segments. Up there we had 12 on a thoracic spine. After that comes the sacral part and the coccygeal part. The region over here is the place where spinal cord ends and it's called the medullary cone. Then comes the terminal thread. It is approximately 20 centimeters long and it just gives the longitudinal support to the spinal cord. It is made out of fibrosis tissue. Now let's look at the spinal cord in general. We said the accusation of the pyramids is the place where spinal cord begins. Then we had the cervical part with 8 segments, then we had the thoracic spine with 12 segments and the lumbar spine with 5 segments, the sacral and the coccygeal part. The sacral spine also had 5 segments and then we had the terminal thread over here which gives the support to the spinal cord, it is just the fibrosis tissue. Now you probably noticed two enlargements here and here. Those enlargements are explained because here at these places a lot of spinal nerves leaves for the extremities, for the limbs. Over here at the cervical part they leave for the upper extremities, for the upper limbs. And down there at the lumbar part they leave for the lower extremities, the lower limbs. Now I will illustrate the vertebral column and the spinal cord inside of it. As you can see the spinal cord is shorter than the vertebral column. And because of that we have the last lumbar spinal nerve leaving here, leaving the spinal cord and leaving the vertebral column here. Same over here and over here. And I already explained to you how we name these segments. You can just think about it from this uh, side view, it's easier to understand it. Now you should also know that the medullary cone, the place where spinal cord ends, should reach the second lumbar vertebra. It is not illustrated that way here, but you should just know that. Now I drew some cross sections of the spinal cord. First we had the cervical segment. Behind here you can see the median sulcus, right next to him is the posterior intermediate sulcus 
and more lateral is the posterior lateral sulcus. So let me write it all down. This was the median sulcus. Then we had the posterior intermediate sulcus. And this over here was the posterior lateral sulcus. The posterior lateral sulcus, this sulcus over here, is very important because I said that the posterior roots for the spinal nerves leave here. So they come from here they join the anterior roots and they create the spinal nerve. From the anterior point of view you can see here the median fissure and over here you should be able to notice the anterolateral sulcus. On the back there is an intermediate septum over here. So this is the median fissure over here should the anterolateral sulcus. This is the intermediate sept. Now I drew further the gray matter. The gray matter is the place where neurons, the bodies of the neurons are. And the white matter over here is a place where are the axons of the neurons, the tracts, they have the myelin sheet. They are, that's why they have this white color. I explained that in the lesson about the nerve. You can go back and watch that video if you don't understand this. And here should be central canal. This over here is the central canal. Now try to remember in the embryology videos I have drawn the neural tube and if this is a neural tube okay we had the neural tube there was a central channel over here and those were the cells around it the central channel stayed really small and all these cells around it have grown so that's why we have a central canal here really small and the rest of the spinal cord really big now I explained you recently about the crossing fibers in the vaccination of pyramids, but along the whole length of the spinal cord there are nerve fibers that cross sides and we call these the commissures. So over here you can see the grey commissure and the white commissure. This is the place where the sides exchange fibers. This part over here of the spinal cord is the posterior horn of the gray matter. It is the sensible horn. It is called the sensible horn because the posterior sensible roots of the spinal nerve come to the spinal cord through this horn. This part over here is the motor horn or the anterior horn of the spinal cord gray matter. The motor neurons send their axons through the anterolateral sulcus here and they join with the sensible root of the spinal nerve and they create the spinal nerve. I already said that. So we had the anterior horn, we had the posterior horn. Okay. Now in the white matter we can distinguish the lateral funiculus, the posterior funiculus, and the anterior funiculus. So this is the anterior funiculus. This is the lateral funiculus. And this over here is the posterior funiculus. Okay. Now the thoracic segments look more like this. They are smaller. The great matter will also have one more horn and it's the lateral horn. It's gonna look like this. So, this over here is the difference, the lateral horn. This lateral horn can be found in all segments, all the way till the first two lumbar segments over here. And then further, it cannot be found anymore. You cannot see the lateral horn. So, L2 is the place where the lateral horn ends. Now the lumbar part is going to look different, it's going to be bigger and have different gray matter shape. 
And of course, then comes the sacral part. It's gonna be smaller and also a different gray matter shape. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please check out my website, flashbrainanatomy.com.